Hey everyone, Trey Mick here from Magnet Forensics, and today I'm excited to walk through Axiom Cyber's remote acquisition of Mac capabilities now available in the 4.0 release. We released Axiom Cyber earlier this year, and customers have really liked our Magnet approach to network acquisition of Windows endpoints, but they also need to be able to acquire from Mac endpoints. So our engineers have been hard at work and have worked through the complexities of collecting from those uh, different Mac endpoints, and we're going to walk through that today. So we're in Axiom process, and we're going to go straight into it now for the remote collection. So I'm going to go ahead and go to Evident Sources. Next, I'm going to go to Remote Computer. And this is the window that you're going to be used to seeing from uh, you know, our Windows collection, but we're going to go ahead and create a new uh, agent for today. And the operating system, as you see, this is uh, brand new. So instead of just having Windows, now we're going to select Mac or Windows. So I'm going to go ahead and select Mac. I'm going to name this agent just uh, with today's date so that I know exactly uh, which agent I'm working off of. And if we wanted to, we could show more details and add in some additional metadata for this so that if someone did run across this file on their endpoint, they would only see the metadata that you provided uh, in this. Next, we have location for agent. This is going to be where it's stored on your local endpoint. So just go ahead and designate that. I've got mine saved to a folder on my desktop. Next, we're going to put in the connectivity details. This is important because this essentially allows the agent to call home to your copy of Axiom that you have running on your forensic machine. So you want to make sure that you have your forensic workstation IP information in. Next, I'm going to enter the port. And we're going to leave the reconnect delay set to 10 seconds, which is standard, and the disconnect keep alive for one day. So once again, if for whatever reason we were to disconnect from our Mac endpoint, uh, the agent would stay alive for one day before kind of self-destructing. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Create Agent. One thing that's important to note about our Mac collection capabilities is that we don't require system integrity protection or SIP to be disabled for use. We can acquire from newer Macs that house the T2 chip as well without any issue. The big difference between our Windows collection capabilities and our Mac capabilities is with Windows we allow for both physical and logical collection of files, and with a Mac you're only going to have the option for the logical files because SIP prevents you from being able to get that physical access to a live running Mac. So with that being said, honestly when I was in corporate investigations I rarely ever needed to do a physical. I was always trying to grab the smallest uh, bit that I could from that endpoint uh, to get it across the network as quickly as possible versus trying to do a full you know, physical image of a hard drive. But I'm going to go ahead and hit deploy agent. We're going to go ahead and deploy our agent to our endpoint that's under investigation today. Next we're going to enter the information about our endpoint. So we're going to start with the IP information for this endpoint. We're going to put in the credentials. And lastly, we're going to put where this agent is stored on the uh, endpoint. And just keep in mind, you're going to have to have access to wherever this may be. So we're going to go ahead and just put this at the root of the uh, user for the investigation. One thing to keep in mind about our remote acquisition from Target Max is that we're going to have to have remote login cut on for that endpoint because we rely on SSH. And to be able to do that, you're just going to go under System Preferences in the sharing menu to make sure that that's checked. And like I said, that's going to enable SSH for that machine, which allows us to deploy our agent. If the user for the credentials that you've entered has pseudo permissions enabled, Axiom will go ahead and display this user as root, which allows for collecting of files such as FS events that otherwise wouldn't be accessible due to macOS uh, by default setting those files as protected from users, even with the admin capability. So make sure you have your settings turned on so that you have pseudo permissions available for whatever uh, usernames that you're using for your Mac uh, collections. Most corporations might have an admin profile set up. Just make sure you have it set so you can collect from the other users uh, from that and that you have pseudo. And then Axiom Cyber will be able to use those pseudo and essentially give you the permissions that would allow for the collection of those more privileged access of those files like the FS events. So I'm going to go ahead and hit deploy agent. So we've deployed the agent. The agent is running live on that endpoint. And once again, just to clarify too, when we deploy this agent via SSH, we are not going to have any type of uh, you know warnings or anything populating on that endpoint. That's going to be completely covert. They're not going to know that you're actually connected to their system. So we're going to go ahead and hit connect to agent now so that we can remotely start acquiring some of these files. 
Now that we're connected to the MacBook Air that's under investigation, as you can see, we are set to root, like I mentioned earlier, because we do have those pseudo privileges. We've got the endpoint IP, and we are currently connected. Just like in our Windows environment, though, we have the ability to have targeted locations, and I'm going to go ahead and navigate in there. And as you can see, we have things like desktop items, documents, downloaded items, pictures. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and select all the web browsing activity for this particular investigation. We could pull iOS uh, backups as well as iCloud data, even the unified log. I'm going to go ahead and grab the quarantine events database as a part of this investigation. The iCloud data as well, I'll go ahead and grab that. I'm going to go ahead and grab the daily outlog as well as the bash history as well for this uh, particular case. And since we're already here, I'm going to grab the finder plist for the MRU and the app store downloads. And I'm going to go ahead and hit next. And just like inside of our Windows investigation, we're going to go ahead and start downloading those, those items as you're requesting it versus waiting for you to build this package and then collecting it all at once. So we're going to grab this as we're going. So we're going to let that run and while that's running I'm going to go ahead and navigate over to files and drives. And for this particular case, as you can see, we can start navigating the different volumes that are on this. And we can see right here we have volumes with docs. We can go ahead and open that up, see what's interesting in there, because typically you're not going to see volumes with docs in that, because that's essentially telling me that there's no, another APFS volume that's residing on that machine uh, that might have some data in there. And sure enough, it looks like we've got some pictures, maybe some contracts. I'm going to go ahead and grab that information. I'm going to see what these pictures allude to, along with some of these screenshots. Now we can keep navigating through here and selecting different pieces from the system that we want, but we've already collected a lot of data from the targeted locations. Uh, so that being said, I'm going to hit next to add these to that list. And as you can see now, we are waiting for those additional pieces to be added. Right now, we are only supporting, as I mentioned earlier, the logical collection of these files. Uh, another difference between our Windows acquisition and our Mac acquisition is with Windows, you can do full RAM capture. Uh, we thought it was important to go ahead and get the acquisition of the files uh, built into Axiom Cyber. We're going to be looking at being able to pull volatile memory from Macs, but that's something that our engineering team is going to be working on next, but definitely wanted to get into your hands the ability to go ahead and start acquiring from these endpoints, you know, covertly versus having to, you know, either call the, uh, you know, custodian in or somehow collecting where they know that they're under investigation at that point. So we're going to give this just a minute to collect all the web browsing activity, the quarantine files, the bash, the daily out, several pictures, and looks like some PDFs in here as well, and we'll be right back. Now that we've completed the acquisition of our browsing activity and our iCloud data and you know the daily out and the app binder uh, downloads along with a lot of additional files, we're going to go ahead and hit next. This is going to prompt us to ask us if we want to leave the agent on the endpoint or go ahead and delete it. I'm going to go ahead and say delete. And then we're going to go ahead and archive these items and hash that archive. Next, we're going to go ahead and hit Add to Evidence Sources. And we're going to go ahead and process this just as if we were processing a, a standard image from a Mac computer and analyze evidence one more time. Now that we're in Axiom Examine, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the evidence that we acquired. So we have the MacBook Air. I'm just going to go ahead and go straight into the file system view. And here you can see we have the zip and we've got it broken down along with that volume uh, with docs that we acquired. And when we start expanding this out, we can see what's inside of docs and we see we've got some pictures here, looks like some screenshots as well. And then we also have a PDF that we acquired that we can get a quick preview of, get a breakdown of what's going on with that. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and hop on over to the artifact view. And here you can see we've got some Google searches, we've got some identifiers that we've pointed out as well. And we've also acquired a good bit of Opera history so we can see the current tabs that were open inside of Opera. We can see some of the downloads from that as well and we can see that this was a Title 18 Crimes and Criminal Procedure Extraction PDF. Let's see what else we can see. We can see the last session from Opera as well that we've uh, collected via the network connection. If we keep moving down uh, we've got a new a refresh bash history viewer that includes the ZSH uh, sessions. So we get a full list here with the full bash history. We can see what's going on, but we can also see per session as well. So we can see here this bash session allowed for showing all the hidden files on the Mac. We also pulled the daily out so we can see things like the disk status. You can see the mount points for the different volumes. So here we can see there's the volumes with that docs once again that uh, we collected from. 
keep looking, we can see the local system status as well. We can see the uptime uh, for that system, along with the network interface statuses, if that was something that would be of interest with addresses, uh, incoming outgoing packets. Uh, we can also see things such as the volume information that we pulled from that uh, finer plist that we acquired from. So we can see here we have APFS image on that volume. We can see uh, Google Chrome uh, potentially was downloaded and mounted. We can see uh, Dropbox installer, same as probably that Google Chrome. We can see things like Images 2019 along with a, a camera that might have been connected as well as maybe a backup drive or two with a USB connection. So definitely a lot of information that we've pulled here very quick and very easy with our new Mac remote acquisition capabilities. Thank you for your time and we're looking for you to try out Axiom Cyber 4.0 and uh, see you next time. Thanks.